Welcome back. It's a new day and a new daily fix. Today we have an update on IO Interactive's Project 007 James Bond game. Blizzard still isn't ready to move on from the PS4 and Xbox One, and Star Wars Outlaws will see the return of a forgotten Star Wars character. Let's go. <laughs> After being relatively quiet for the past few years, we have an update on that James Bond game IO Interactive has been working on. They've recently brought on Ubisoft veteran Rodrigo Santoro as the project's mission director. Announced via a blog post on IO's site, the game's associate production director, Frederick Willemsen, said, quote, Rodrigo's critical thinking and enthusiasm are qualities we welcome, and we look forward to seeing him act as missions director. Not sure why IO needs a missions director since they're kind of known for creating brilliant missions in the Hitman games, but I digress. Rodrigo Santoro has quite a lot of AAA game experience. He's worked as world director for Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, lead level designer for The Division and its sequel, and as a designer for Crisis 2 and 3. Rodrigo said of his new job, quote, Project 007 got my attention since the day it was announced, and I feel incredibly fortunate to work with the team making the game. He continued, Every conversation that I have had so far with team members has shown the team is passionate about delivering a memorable and unique experience. Project 007 was announced back in 2020, but updates on the game have been sparse. IO Interactive, the makers of the Hitman series, have previously said via an interview with the Danish Broadcasting Corporation that it won't be based on any of the previous 007 movies or actors. However, speaking to Edge magazine, the developers said they want their bond closer to Daniel Craig than Roger Moore in terms of tone. So for you Bond neophytes, that means more serious, less silly, though hopefully the game retains some of the dark humor of the Hitman series. There's no release date or title, or really anything else about Project 007 available, but if the studio's track record with Agent 47 is any indication, Bond will probably have many, many ways to exercise that license to kill. Moving on, Blizzard's Rod Ferguson still doesn't think it's time to leave last-gen consoles behind. Speaking with IGN, Ferguson, who oversees Diablo 4, says that eventually that time will come, but that maintaining parity with current and last-gen hardware is a priority. Speaking specifically about Diablo 4, Ferguson said, quote, There's always a time and a place for when maybe it's time to no longer support a platform. I don't think we're at that time. But we have a long road for Diablo 4, and so do we talk about, hey, we have this idea for a feature, but maybe it's not a feature our min spec or Gen 8 players can support, so it's not something we can do today. The issue has been a topic of conversation in the gaming community, with many feeling that supporting the PS4 and Xbox One is holding current gen consoles back. The PS5 and Xbox Series X were hard to find during the first two years of availability, and it only made sense for developers and publishers to support the previous gen consoles since that was what was widely available. Meanwhile, Diablo 4 is about to enter its fourth season after launching last summer, and we'll see its first major expansion, Vessels of Hatred, later this year. Blizzard also recently added ray tracing to the console versions of the game, except Series S, but that feature is locked at 30 frames per second. So what do you think? Is Rod Ferguson right? Have we not yet squeezed out all the performance we can out of the PS4 and Xbox One? Let me know in the comments. And finally, Star Wars Outlaws will see the return of a character you may have forgotten about. Via Game Informer, Lady Kira will be featured in Ubisoft's open world Star Wars game. Who? You know, Lady Kira, childhood friend of Han Solo, grew up to be leader of the Crimson Dawn, played by Amelia Clark in Solo, A Star Wars Story, Lady Kira. Considering Ubisoft's game is exploring the criminal underworld, she's not totally out of place. Anyone who's been keeping up with the Star Wars comics can tell you she's been making plenty of moves since her big screen debut. Now that's a name I've not heard in a long time. Game Informer editor Brian Shea did confirm that Amelia Clark will not be reprising the role for the game, and the screenshot of the character from the Game Informer story doesn't appear to look like Clark either. Star Wars Outlaws will take place around 14 years after the events of Solo, so it makes sense we'd see an older Kira than we saw in the movie. But with all the advancements in technology these days, it's certainly possible they could have aged up Amelia Clark's likeness for the game. I'm told there are some pretty convincing TikTok filters that show you what you will look like in 20 years. Then again, if they can replace Harrison Ford with Alden Ehrenreich as Han Solo, they can swap out Amelia Clark with whoever that is. I'm sure no one will notice. And that is your Daily Fix for Wednesday, April 10th. Now that you caught up on the news, check out our preview for Destiny 2 The Final Shape. I'm Damon Hatfield, and for all your video game news, stay tuned to IGN.